It doesn't matter. Good, Good morning. morning. And Happy New Year. Uh, I want to welcome you to this worship on this uh, second Sunday after Christmas. Um, so, <laughs> you may be curious as to know why you have two pastors this morning. Um, I didn't know I was, if I was going to be here or not, to be honest. Uh, Wendy's mom is not doing well. She was uh, hospitalized on December 17th, and I think you all heard me uh, ask for your prayers for her at that time. They found she had pneumonia that was, we think, brought on by COVID-19, which she tested positive for. Um, she was stable for the first week, and then this past week, she's been going downhill pretty steady every day. So, uh, three days ago now, I think it was Thursday, the decision was made to put her on a ventilator. Uh, we had been trying to avoid that as long as we could. And uh, they put her on the ventilator and it, it didn't appear to help. Uh, the next day they called us and said, if you want to have any chance to see her, you better come here now. So we spent, I guess that was New Year's Day uh, in Columbia. And Wendy did get to see her, although it was behind a, a glass window. They were at least, you know, they could actually put eyes on her, not through a smart device. Um, now, yesterday, her her uh, O2 sad numbers were in the 90s again, and uh, her kidneys started functioning a little bit again, which is what we were worried about before: is that her kidneys had shut down. So, right now, we're just taking it one day at a time. So, uh, I'm pleased to be back with you all. I. Uh, <coughs> Like I said, I wasn't sure I was going to be here, so I asked Pastor, Pastor Janice Kelly to cover for me this morning. Pastor Janice, thank you for preaching for us this morning. Very much appreciate it. But um, I also wanted to be in God's house this morning, and I could think of no other place to be than right here. So I'm glad we were able to come back. Uh, a couple of, oh, um, before I move into just generic announcements, I do have one bit of very sad news. Um, Tony Wilcox's mom, Lori's husband, uh, Tony's mom, Leah, passed away yesterday. Uh, I met with them uh, a week ago. Uh, let, let me just say this, is, this was not a surprise. It just was a lot sooner than any of us expected. So please do keep Lori and Tony and Alan in your prayers this week. Uh, funeral arrangements are yet to be decided, but... Uh, um, I, I don't know what that's going to look like yet. So, um, obviously, it's difficult in this COVID day and age to do what we want to do the way we want to do it. But uh, if uh, I can figure out a way for you all to support Lori and Tony now, I will certainly let you know. Okay, I think that's all the bad news I have. Good news wise, uh, I did talk to Stuart Bumgarner earlier this week, and he had. Um, he had surgery, and from the sounds of it, he went, it, it went quite well. So, um, but his granddaughter, Aslan, had a procedure done, and I don't have any news on that. Did, has anybody else heard anything about Aslan's procedure that she had done? They were still waiting on results? Okay, all right. So I'll try and get an update on that and get that out to everybody. So. Please keep their whole family in your prayers and, and uh, pray, pray, pray a prayer of thanks that Stuart's procedure went well. Um, I think that's all the updates I have medically. Okay, for this morning, sorry I left this on the bench. Um, so Wayne has uh, asked me to call an awful, if you will. So the hymn after the sermon, um, instead of what it says in the bulletin, which is number 50, we're going to sing number 65, Silent Night. Huh? The second hymn will be 65. Right. And the last hymn will be 
Yeah, yeah I haven't gotten there yet. I'm still, I'm still talking about the sermon hymn. Okay, so the first hymn is as printed, which is O Little Town of Bethlehem. The second hymn will be number 65, not 50. And the, the last hymn, the closing hymn, instead of 71, will be 70. Correct? So instead of angels we've heard, we will sing Go Tell It on the Mountain. I'll announce that again when we get there. Sorry for the confusion. <coughs> so, all right. We good now, Wayne? All right. Are there any other announcements? Oh, please do pick up your poinsettias today while they still look good. Yeah. And we still have, did everybody get their envelopes? Do we still have envelopes in the, in the North Dex? So, if you have not yet picked up your offering envelopes, please do pick those up. Um, just because my son asked me this morning, I'll just offer this one more time. Sunday school is on hold. Sunday school and Bible study is on hold. Uh, I expect this week Governor Cooper will give us an update on where he is with gathering size and those kind of things. I don't expect it's going to change given the number of cases in North Carolina that we've had in the last two weeks. Um, but we are putting that on hold until the governor lightens his restrictions. So please stand by and get updates to you about that when they come out. Okay, I think. That's it for announcements. Anything else, Mandy? Okay. All right, if you would please uh, take a moment of quiet and prepare your hearts and minds for worship. Our service begins on page 56 with the brief order for confession and forgiveness. I invite you to stand as you are able. <clears throat> we are gathered together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Please take a moment to reflect on your specific sins as we lay them at the foot of the cross. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us. Renew us and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a call and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our entrance hymn is number 41, O Little Town of Bethlehem.
Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Sunday after Christmas comes from the third chapter of 1 Kings. The king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. Solomon used to offer a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart towards you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love, and have given him a son to sit on his throne this day. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of David my father, although I am but a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in, and your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people, too many to be numbered or counted for multitude. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, 
that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. And God said to him, Because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life or riches or the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, behold, I now do according to your word. Behold, I give you a wise and discerning mind, so that none like you has been before you, and none like you shall arise after you. I give you also what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that no other king shall compare with you all your days. And if you will walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments, as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. Then he came to Jerusalem and stood before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and offered up burnt offerings and peace offerings and made a feast for all of his servants. The word of the Lord. We will now read Psalm 119 printed in the bulletin by verse. Oh, how I love your law. All the day long it is in my mind. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your decrees are my study. I restrain my feet from every evil way that I may keep your word. How sweet are your words to my taste. They are sweeter than honey to my mouth. The second reading is from the first chapter of Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him, who works all things according to the counsel of his will so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. Here ends the reading.
But supposing him to be in the group, they went a day's journey. But then they began to search for him among their relatives and acquaintances. And when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem searching for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when his parents saw him, saw him they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. And he said to them, Why are you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? And they did not understand the saying that he spoke to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was submissive to them. And his mother treasured up all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature, in favor with God and man. Here is the gospel of our Lord.
It's not just the ones who really have reason to um, be feeling down. It's the ones, things aren't the way they are supposed to be. They're not normal. Why can't we all sit next to each other in church? Why do we have to wear masks? Why can't we just go up and give everybody a hug? Is there anybody here who wouldn't like that? We all would like that. That's not the world we're in right now. And as I was thinking of this, I started thinking about Mary and Joseph on the first Christmas. Do you think that's the Christmas they planned? Was Mary prepared as a teenage girl to give birth in a strange community that she didn't know anything about? In the middle of the night, in the cold, outside, sort of in a dugout area for the animals, and to have to place her newborn son in the feed bin as his first cradle? You think that's what she planned? I don't think so. Do you think Joseph really planned to have to take his new bride and and go through this kind of situation? And then soon later, after, do you think they really enjoyed having to pick up and go to Egypt to save their son? Because Herod had gone on a spree and was, had ordered the murder of all children under two? Is that really what you think they, they were enjoying? And remember, they're the favorite. They're the ones that God put his son, his beloved son, in infant form with. So why should we think everything should be perfect? Now we celebrate this away in a manger song and uh, silent night and outside and, and, and it's beautiful and to think that we idealized it like we have so much of the holiday. But this holiday, as we call it, Christmas, we celebrate it for the gift God has given us of his son, for the express purpose to suffer and die on a cross to save our lives. To take the sin of our entire world away. That's not really that idealistic either. I've found over the years that sometimes the most difficult and traumatic experiences, if we give them time, God will show us blessings. We, we like to believe everything was perfect and, and ideal for Mary and Joseph. It was a warm night, and it was fun to be outside, and everything was wonderful. It's beautiful to look at in cars and pictures. But think about it. Anyone who has gone, gone through childbirth or been with someone who has. Is there anything idealistic about it? It's painful. My daughter wrote my son-in-law's finger hanging out. Trust me, that's not what he expected. But today, we hang on to those idealistic things. We build up our own little story of what Christmas should be. Every family has it. Let me ask you this. Have any of you ever had the idyllic Christmas that you attended? Has it always worked out? I can usually burn something or forget something or any number of things goes wrong. And it just becomes part of what I call the Kelly 
tradition. I mean, if you look at men going to the hospital because, well, I, I was married to a man who could always figure out a way to get himself in trouble. And, and we did that with the ER. But it's important for us to understand what this really is. This is, it is truly the greatest present ever given. God gave the world a second chance. That's the present, that's the gift of Christmas. It's not all the toys and everything under the trees, but that's the true present. And he had been working on that from before creation. And it was prophesied through from Genesis forward. This was coming. In our Advent text, God was setting signposts, billboards up. This is him. He's the one I've been telling you about. He's the one I've been promising. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Our Old Testament wisdom. Probably, again, one of the greater gifts that has ever been given. Wisdom, we're told, begins with knowing God, who God is, and who we are in relation. Unfortunately, a lot of times, we get it all turned around and we think we are. We're the big guy. Not happening. I don't know how many of you out there, anyone out there this morning that's a workaholic and likes things your way? Nobody? Well, I am. I have been. I think God is breaking me up, and I still fall back occasionally. But he helped me. Over the years, he's given me four bass pounds. I think he did that finally to help me understand what he has to put up with with me. Basset hounds, if you know them, they're sweet, they're lovable, but they're the most honoring when they get their mind set on something thing that God ever put on this earth. And I'm including dogs. <laughs> I've got a 15 year old right now, Murphy. Once he sets his mind to something, no, I don't get to ignore him. I don't get to just put him off for a while. And no really doesn't work with him. Not no once, twice, three times. You really have to have, excuse me, a come to Jesus meeting with him to get him to wake up that he's going in the wrong direction. And to be very honest, folks, over the years, that's been me. But God is more patient has been more patient with me than I have been with Murphy sometimes. What I was saying, wisdom is about knowing God, but knowing who he is and who we are. Who are we? Baptized children of God. Yes, we're his children. He's not ours. We don't get to tell him how to do things and what to do. We're there to learn. And over the years, I've found that once I gave up insisting on all of that, things got a lot easier. Actually, I think it come to be that I finally realized I was getting older and I was lazy and I was putting out way too much energy to have very little good result. And when I allowed God to choose, it always worked. It just simply always worked better. Now granted, I would have never figured it out that way in a million years, nor could I have made the same things happen. But God can. And so I, I suggest this morning that in this new year, we allow God to be in the driver's seat. And we learn to trust him. Trust that 
take our sin away, to give us a second chance at life, to be given through Jesus' death and our sincere belief in him as our Lord and Savior, an inheritance to life eternal with the Father. Sacrificial love and obedience. 
We don't have to worry about how perfect we are, because we're not. We're not, and we never will be in this world. We keep trying. Luther said, when you get up in the morning and wash your face, you throw water in your face, remember your baptism. Remember who you are and whose you are. Why you can get up and face the dead, knowing that you are right with God. Let us go into this new year. Yes, it is, has been rough. Yes, it will probably be rough for some time. But you are already victors. You are victorious in Christ. So this is where we made the first change. At this time, I would ask you to stand as you were able, and we will sing uh, hymn number 65, Silent Night.
God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With joy and gratitude for the gift of Christ our Savior, let us draw near to God the Father praying on behalf of the church, the world, and all who need his loving kindness. God of all wisdom, we see in young Jesus how your wisdom shined through and caused many to be amazed. Grant us just a fraction of your wisdom that we would walk humbly and prudently through life, serving and worshiping in your holy name, and boldly acting in ways that care for those you love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful God, it is often difficult for us to understand the depths of your grace toward us. We know we are sinful and that we need forgiveness. And yet we struggle to offer that same gift to others. Touch our hearts that we would understand more clearly the gift you offer us when you say, You are forgiven. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father of all, grant in abundance to your youngest of disciples. Let the more mature in faith walk with them, teaching them to follow in the ways of Christ. Protect them from the surrounding culture that seeks to pull them away from a life in you and instead fills them with false notions of what is important and holy. Let each of us invest ourselves in those who are younger than we are, therefore passing on your love, mercy, and wisdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of healing, bring about renewed wellness for those who are suffering or in need in any way. You see the deepest needs of all your children. Encourage those who are struggling to put their trust in your hands. For you have promised to uphold all in need. Today we pray especially for everyone on our prayer list, those we name now in our hearts, and those known only to you. May they know your abiding presence and put their complete trust in your never-failing promises for new life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Be with all pastors in the North American Lutheran Church. Bless Bishop Dan and his staff, Dean Nathan, and all clergy in the Carolinas Mission Region. Guide them in their ministry, strengthen them to do your work, and protect them from all evil. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, 
Be with our brothers and sisters at St. Stephen's, Christ United, St. James, and Mount Calvary Lutheran Churches as they discern the call for a new pastor. Assure them of your Holy Spirit's presence in and through the call process and lead us to be good neighbors to them during their transition. Bless their interim pastors as they lead them through this season of change. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, merciful Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for the sake of your incarnate Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be with you always. We're not shaking hands and we're not hugging with anyone outside our household, but as you are able, please exchange God's peace with each other.
You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, that whoever believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Having come into the world, he fulfilled for us your holy will and accomplished our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and his promise to come again, we give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. And we implore you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit, to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, that we and all who share in the body and blood of your Son may be filled with a heavenly peace and joy. And receiving the forgiveness of sin, may be sanctified in soul and body, and have our portion with all your saints. All honor and glory are yours, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. And now, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the meal is ready. Thank you. 
Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace.
Let us pray. Almighty God, you gave your Son both as a sacrifice for sin and a model of the godly life. Enable us to receive him always with thanksgiving and to conform our lives to his. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. So our final change for the day is we're now going to sing hymn number 70, Go Tell It on the Mountain. <laughs> 